Hello and welcome back to Charlie's House Call Auto Repair. What am I getting myself into today? Well, today it's a 2012 Jeep Compass. We have a barrage of engine codes. Customer complaint, check engine light is on, but there are no drivability issues. Break out the Zurich Pro. We're going to do a scan on the Jeep. I'm really, really looking forward to getting a chance to look at this T10 from Harbor Freight if I get the opportunity. Really want to. Uh, let's see. Get this thing scanning. We'll, uh, retrieve all the codes. And then we'll go into some bi-directional testing and we will troubleshoot the circuits, figure out what's going on here. Let's just do this automatically here. And of course it wants to be a stinker. I don't have internet access here so I can just back out of that. This is a 2012. You guys read that for a quick sec. And we're going to proceed. We'll do a full health report. The key is in the in and on. Right off the bat, we got a bunch of powertrain codes. And let's see what we got here. Okay, so all we've got is powertrain and body control module codes. Well, report. Active. Air conditioning control circuit open. Camshaft position sensor or actuator open. Uh, cam set, cam position two, position actuator open. Short runner valve control circuit. Uh, number one, oxygen sensor heater circuit. That'll knock the emissions out of whack. Uh, and a small eva evap leak stored. So let's get in here and right hand high beam circuit control. That I already found a broken wire for, so let's get underneath the hood and see what's going on there. Right. Now, we already know that our problem is down in there, in that mess. We've got uh, crimp connectors that are not sealed all over the place. We've got auxiliary ground wires. We've got a chopped wire here to the headlight circuit, which is probably why we have a headlight circuit code. So we're going to get these bottles out of the way and gain access to down there. And we're going to do a little bi-directional testing right here in a moment. All right, so first thing we're going to do is got our test light hooked up to the ground. We're going to come over here. We're going to verify that we have power. Now, little things that I've been observing while I'm in here, and we've got obviously rodents and we get some chewed wires. These, the, uh, the insulation on the wire hasn't been chewed through, but the tape has. I'm not concerned about those at the moment, but we're going to get down in here. I'm going to remove uh, as much as I can to make as much room for you guys as possible so you can see down in here. So what I'm going to be working with, I'll try to get that broken wire there fixed as well. Got the bolts out of the windshield washer fluid bottle, you know, overflow bottle, antifreeze. Got all of these things detached so that I can move them around. Up and out of the way, make things a little bit more accessible down there. Probably got a little 
spillage if I disconnect things, so let's try to not do that. So this one's getting disconnected because it's empty already anyways. Maybe. Oh, wow. That's a rubber hose. That's pretty, oh, okay. Well, looks like it's gonna stay there, but I can't loosen that up. It's too stiff, it's too cold. Let's get down in here and start getting at that mess of wires. What we're gonna do now is we've got the uh, intake solenoid unplugged. We've got um, ground and we've got power somewhere in here I can't get to because I put the camera on top of it. Either way, let's see, we've got just gentle touch. Got nothing on either one of these. Let's go to VVT solenoid intake phaser actuator one, go to 100% with it. Turn to kick on. And I've got, there we go. We have power on one side, which means the other side's got to be ground. Here we got 60%. Twenty percent. So we do have control. We do have power. Now let's make sure we have ground. Which in this case we know we already do not. So we're going to switch things around and go over to power. That's a little bit interesting. So we got power. We've got power. But ground, ground, no ground, ground, no ground, on the computer, no ground, no ground on the lug, uh, let's see what's going on here, figure out where this ground disappeared. But uh, there's a bunch of splicing down in here. So we're probably gonna have to do a lot of digging down in here to figure out what's going on. But you know, we've got ground. We've got ground in the, uh, which I can't see. Stabbing in the dark here, yeah. Okay, we got no ground on that one. Yes, no, yeah, there's the ground down there. Let's see if there's ground in the back side of this. Yep. Let me see, is there ground going into this side over here? I can't get in it. Yep, there's ground in there. More wires in here all chewed up. We've gone down in here and we've cleaned up this rat's nest. The screws down in there. Some wiring repairs done. And now, do we have ground on the solenoid? Yes, we have ground on the solenoid. Repair complete. Let's put this all back together now. We cleared the codes. The code stayed clear. Check engine light is off. Engine is running. This appears to be a fix. Let's go over, wrap it all up and we will put this all back together again. Get the headlight back in, close everything up here and then wrap this one up. Now we got it all wrapped up, all back together, nice and neat and clean down there. It's running really good. We have no more check engine light, no more idiot lights. And everything is currently happy. So let's close the hood up. And we have no fault 
codes left in the system. So this is a fix. So if you guys felt this one to be helpful, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for upcoming videos. And most importantly, don't forget, you've got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches. This one is that when you have a check engine light come on and a bunch of codes all come up all at the same time changes are extremely good there's something in common between all of them so all you gotta really do is figure out what that common denominator is and repair that and that should bring everything right back to normal Break out the Zork Pro, do a scan of the vehicle, and see what we've got for codes. Did the 